video uh, like you have Planting how many is one and two. Okay, this is where we left off last time. Is that right, guys? This is where uh, we talked about cross section. Cross section of these guys. Um, all of the structures I talked about it and everything else. Okay. The next class. Uh, this belongs to class uh, Turbularia. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, Cross section of Planaria. Dusitia is the name of the genus. Planaria is the name of the common name. And uh, so the next class is class Trematoda. Trematodes are fruit. Common name for them is the fruit. They are the fruit uh, and in animal kingdom. Um, they're all parasitic. All of members of this class are parasitic. And they have tegument, which is kind of. Uh, uh, for animal kingdom is a little bit unusual. They have syncytial cells right here. I wrote it uh, for you guys. And they have no cilia unlike uh, your planaria. Planaria had cilia underneath, but these guys on the uh, 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 ventral side, but these guys, they have no cilia. And what it is, what the syncytial, um, syncytial, um, Cells of the uh, tegument are like this. They have <coughs> these, they have these uh, cell membrane, and then the other, they're like that. It's very unusual, and they have a nucleus here, a nucleus here, a nucleus here. It looks like this is, this is all one cell, though. Am I making some sense? They look like it's three cells, but it's all one cell. But the cytoplasm can float around from here to here. That's what syncytial means uh, in these animals. Okay, uh, they do have these uh, invaginations, for lack of a better term, something you are familiar with, of the cell membrane, and these are all nucleus. Uh, but that's how they are. They have multinuclei in each cell. The cells are have remedies of cell membranes, but they are not completely separated from each other. Okay, unlike our, 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 our epidermis, is that right? That would be a nice essay question. Compare the syncytial pigment of um, trematodes with our epidermis. Okay, so. Uh, they have two suckers, oral sucker and ventral sucker. Uh, on your <coughs> slides, the real animals, and of course we have some models. Uh, you should be able to identify them, the oral sucker and uh, ventral sucker. Um, where is the model? Right here. I should have got to compare it. Ouch. Okay. So this is an example of Conortis sinensis. Uh, there are other species, but we have model of, oh, I hope I don't break it. Uh, model of chlorotis oral sucker, ventral sucker. Oral sucker, ventral sucker. Of course, uh, this is the back of the animal. This is the ventral portion of the animal. This is the dorsal portion of the animal. So you cannot see it from that end. You see it on the ventral side. Okay. Uh, then, don't worry about the division of the class of uh, uh, trematodes. Don't worry about the subclasses, but worry about classes. I will not ask you during lecture or lab exam about subclasses because some textbooks they say well there is a class diagenia and class monogenia don't worry die it means what two. two and mono it means one so don't worry about all of that um, but no there is such a thing somewhere um, again I will not ask you doing exam what class what subclass they have an intermediate host since they have two hosts two diagenia two hosts they have intermediate host and final host. Intermediate host usually are the invertebrates, usually. Okay, and the final hosts are the vertebrates. And final hosts uh, are usually vertebrates. Life cycle is like this. <coughs> the eggs are released and become mericidium. Mericidium uh, uh, goes, uh, is, uh, it has cilia. It goes, in, we do have slide of this, we have slide of this. Uh, depends on the species uh, in the lab. They get into a snail, they find a snail, aquatic snail most of the time, and the sporocyst uh, get inside of the snail, develop, is developed, 
the spore inside of sporocyst, you have radio. Inside of radio, you have cercaria. Cercaria gets out of the uh, snail and either become metacercaria and insist on vegetations or they actually go, they skip. Some species do not have metacercaria, and you will learn that. You, we will talk about it, and they go into the adult. In animal kingdom, in animal kingdom, you do not have any other species that one egg becomes many larvae. Am I making some sense? One egg becomes many cercaria, and then they find their host. In animal kingdom, you have one egg, eventually becomes one adult. Am I making some sense? All of the animals we studied so far, one egg eventually becomes one adult. These guys are different. These guys, one egg becomes many <coughs> cercaria, many larvae, and each one of these larvae, then they have to find the right host. And when they find the right host, then the life cycle is complete. I hope I'm making some sense. Yes, <coughs> no, uh, you will see it. Uh, for at least the species we will talk about. Well, again, when you say whole class, <laughs> when you say the whole class, uh, you might go to Google and say, oh, I mean, I found one species in trematodes that does not do it this way. But to answer your question, yes, that is true for all of the species we study in here. In old days, I've since we did not have access to internet, I would say, yes, that's true. <laughs> that's every species in trematodes. Um, but again, you might Google something, and I, and then I would, you know, I would not. Okay, let's go. Uh, why this type of life cycles? Why one egg becomes so many larvae eventually? Because these guys have to go through two, sometimes three, different hosts. If there's only one egg becomes one adult and they have to go through different hosts, the odds of the, the life cycle goes on, it's going to be very slim, almost to zero. They will go extinct. But they do not. One egg becomes many larvae eventually, and then those larvae, hopefully, they find the right host and the life cycle will go on and on and on and, on, and they are alive for billions of years. Okay, so uh, single egg can rise to many progeny, many offspring. Uh, the first organism we are going to study is Fasciola hepatica. Uh, the liver rot, the name of the disease is liver rot. Uh, it exists in the United States. Uh, sheep, cow, uh, they can get it. The ruminant animals can get this. Uh, they can have liver rot, and then USDA inspectors at the slaughter plants condemn the liver of the animal. I'm not sure they condemn the whole animal or not. Um, I used to know these things, but I'm forgetting uh, things a little bit. Uh, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, there, there was one disease that they used to, I, they used to I, I don't know what it is now, they used to condemn the whole animal. Even though it was in one spot, you could just cut it off and throw it away. The, whole, the rest of the animal is fine, but they, when they saw it in um, slaughter plants, uh, they condemn the whole animal. The animal could not go to the food chain. Uh, but anyway, sometimes there are some diseases, the whole herd will not, um, if I come across, they condemn the whole herd of the animals. The whole animals are going to be buried, slaughtered and buried, or the farmers will eat those animals. Uh, we'll talk about that later on. But anyhow, the rules are different for each disease, each animal. A little bit. The other one is, uh, a fasciola hepatica, what do I have to say? A uh, fasciola hepatica, it is a, uh, it's, found, it's in the liver of the cow sheep, and then uh, the cow sheep uh, will defecate into the water, a body of water, and then uh, the uh, cercaria comes out, and the cercaria will go find a vegetation, usually watercress. I don't know if any of you are familiar with watercress, it's a vegetation we human eat also. And then uh, another cow comes and eat the watercress, and uh, they become infected. So that's how it is. The eggs of this parasite, Fasciola hepatica, is found in the feces of cows and sheep. They defecate, again, on a, a plant, plants, watercress, any other vegetation. And, and then uh, it goes through the snail as well. 
um, and eventually uh, the cercadia comes out of snail and goes into what it was. Fasciola hepatica, uh, same thing for human. Okay, we human uh, defecate in body of water. In that body of water, there is a right snail. Again, the snail that is for fasciola hepatica is a different snail for uh, fasciola buski. Thank God. If it was all the same scale, the same snail, then the, the, it, would, it would not be fun for us, for a human being. But anyhow, so uh, when we human defecate, again, it happens in the United States, it's very <coughs> rare, but it can happen in the U.S., but in other countries, I think we discussed this, the farmers or the people who not have an, when you're farming, here in the United States, they have an outhouse, they have those uh, portals, you know what I'm talking about. So you go and do it in a portal, but other places, they just do it next to the water. In that water, there are snails. The snails, the, uh, you saw the life cycle, the egg, out of the egg comes mercidium, mercidium swims, but cilia goes to the snail, inside of the snail, they go through radio, sporosis, so on and so forth, and out of the snail comes uh, cercarium. And cercarium swims and find a vegetation. Okay, sits on that vegetation, becomes metacercaria. We do have spite of it. And then, we human come and eat the metacercaria. Or oh, fasciola buski, fasciolopsis buski, fasciolopsis buski, not hepatica. In human, usually, we do not get hepatica. But um, there are some reports there that in Middle East happens. But anyhow, uh, we eat the water crust, and then we become infected with fasciola, uh, fasciolopsis buski. Okay, Clonortis sinensis, uh, it is called the um, human liver fluke. It's called human liver fluke, and it is common in far <coughs> eastern country in a remote area. In big cities, this is not common. Usually in a remote area, uh, rural area, uh, this still happens. Okay, and metacercaria is found in a meat of fish. So when you um, cook the fish, uh, the meat of the fish, it will kill metacercaria. But when you pickle it, and that's the custom in far eastern countries, uh, Japan, well Japan does not have much problem now with it, but uh, Vietnam, Korea, they like to eat pickled fish. When you pickle fish, it will not kill the metacercaria. So the life cycle keeps going and going and going. And of course, uh, some people like to eat sushi, raw meat, of course he has it. If the fish has this, the sushi, uh, it has the metacercaria, then the person becomes infected. Yes, Jose? That's fine. I got it. You got it. Okay. Oral sucker and ventral sucker. So this is it. This is what I was talking about. This is clonorchia sinensis in human. Again, low numbers cause not much of a problem in human, but if there are a whole bunch of them, remember, these can be, you eat raw fish every day, and they all have metacercaria, all of the metacercaria in human, in the, um, uh, your liver, it's not actually in liver, I'll show you where it is, it's in the uh, common bile duct and the hepatic duct area, then you have too much of it, it can block those uh, common bile duct and hepatic duct, and, and cause some problem. And they can migrate to other parts of the body if there are too many of them. And the person will have some problem with it. <coughs> but the oral sucker, human liver fluke, is called, here it is, this gentleman uh, uh, is uh, collecting watercress. This is a body of water. It's collecting watercress. And this water, <coughs> uh, this cercaria in here, possibly has the, uh, the watercress, has uh, metacercaria. And then, of course, he's taking it home uh, by rinsing it a little bit, but you know, maybe not rinsing it, eating it, and the life cycle of uh, uh, Fasilopsis buski go on and on and on. Larry? Yeah, if you had enough of them, they could block something in like your liver? If, but if you have a, a, just a little bit of them, are they asymptomatic? Right, yes, yes. It can be symptomatic if you have too much of them inside of your liver. But right. they have like not a lot of them. Do they? No, they not much problem. Usually, these are low numbers uh, are harmless <coughs> organisms. Okay, Fasciolopsis buski, on the other hand, uh, this one. Okay, 
Okay, I'll show you a picture of this one in a minute, the life cycle and everything else. Uh, but this one, this is a picture was specifically taken for Fasciolopsis buski because this has nothing to do with Clonorchis. Clonorchis, right, you get it from eating raw meat. This one, you get it from eating raw meat. Uh, fish, Clonorchis, <laughs> right? Clonorchis sinensis is the organism you get it from raw meat. But this, when they show you this picture, okay, it, it, it's Fasciolopsis buski. Right? We, you have to get familiar with those a lot of the guys. Okay, so here, uh, I hope I talked about that. Here is a clenor, uh, here is clenorchus sinensis inside of the bile duct right here. As I said, if there are a few species, a few animals, four, five, ten, it usually does not cause any problem. Uh, <coughs> but if you have more of them, then they can travel to liver and cause damage. They can travel to the rest of the lungs and so on and so forth. And uh, there are too many of them here, right? There's not enough room for them to eat, grow. So let's go over the life cycle. Um, they release the egg. We do have slide of the egg. They have operculum. Operculum means what? Flap. flap. The flap comes out. Uh, Mercidium comes out. It's ciliated. They go find the snail. They penetrate into the snail. They just they can simply penetrate into the snail. And then inside of the snail, they have sporocysts. Inside of the sporocysts, radia is developed. Inside of radia, then you have uh, cercaria. Cercaria uh, look like this. They get out of the snail, they go find the fish, and they penetrate into the fish. They don't have, the fish do not have to swallow it. They just penetrate through the uh, scales of fish. And then inside of the fish, which we do not have slide of it, it's uh, metacercaria developed. We human eat raw fish or pickled fish, and voila, we become infected with it. Okay, I hope I'm making sense of the life cycle. How many hosts they have to go through? One, two, three. That's why one egg can become many cercaria. The only place you see in animal kingdom. They have to go through three different hosts. Three different hosts. Okay? But anyway, usually these two are aquatic. This is an aquatic one. And how, how you say, how does it get from here to here? Well, that person defecates in the body of water. When they are farming or they are, uh, I don't know, gathering food or like watercrest, whatever they are doing, they have, they have to defecate right there. The body of the water is there, everything is there. Right there. And the snail is there too. The fish is there too. Everything is there. So the life cycle completes. Give two reasons why tegument is beneficial uh, to platy Uh Think about it. I, I, the answer is in the previous videos, but I want you to think about it and um, come up the next session. Ask me, but don't forget, I ask you, nobody asked me, what are the five uh, differences between hydra and the rest of the hydrozoan? Nobody came up. Uh, with the answer, but anyhow, uh, think about this one. I'm gonna put it on the table, see what you guys come up with. I want you to think about it. Again, this is the uh, anatomy of Clonorchis sinensis and the life cycle. I'm not gonna go over it anymore. Uh, if there's any uh, questions or problems, let me know. Uh, they can put many eggs out, but not as many as, um, not as many as um, tapeworm. I will talk about tapeworm. Uh, they are hermaphrodic, monaceous, but they do practice cross-fertilization inside of our bile duct because of genetic variation and so on and so forth. We talked about that. Schistosoma. Schistosoma is a devastating parasite. It's one of those six organisms that World Health Organization, World Health Organization, accuse of, they don't accuse it, they're saying these are killing people on planet Earth. We should tackle this six. And you will see that six uh, diseases. Out of those six diseases, five of them are parasites. Five of them are you're studying in this class. Okay, we'll get there uh, someday. Uh, Shisasoma, the old name is Bel Harazia, which was the name of the scientist who worked on it and of course discovered the life cycle of it. So they are call, uh, calling it um, uh, Bill Harazea. Uh, male is bigger, of course. Uh, male has a structure. We do have male and female on your slide collection. 
Uh, male has a structure called gynecophoric canal. Gynecophoric canal is a uh, groove, if you would, in the male that the female can go in there and they copulate. Okay? And some species that the female, when it goes there, then it becomes mature. Female is immature until it goes into the gynecophoric canal and they do copulation. Just like human, when the sperm goes into the oviduct, the best analogy I have, the second meiosis occurs. Did you study that in bio one? I think, I hope you studied that. When the sperm goes to the oviduct and reaches the egg, then the second meiosis occurs. But anyhow, there are three different species of schistosoma. I already wrote schistosoma once, so second time I can write it small like this. Is that right? Yes? No? Maybe? Perhaps? On the lineup, schistosoma mansoni is found in the uh, veins of the large intestine. Schistosoma japanicum found in the small intestine, uh, the veins, the uh, blood vessels, and schistosoma hematobium found in urinary bladder. These two will give the person a uh, bloody feces. This one gives the person a bloody urine. In old, old, ancient, we're talking about ancient, not present, Egypt. If a man did not, a woman have to have the period, then we know they're adult, they can have family, they have, can have children, right? The men, the indication for men, when they are men, right? They had to have a bloody urine. What? Mm -hmm. They had to have a bloody urine. Then they would say, oh, you're an adult now, you're a big man now, so we can give you a wife, we can give you a, 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 a herd of uh, sheep, you can have, go ahead and start your family now because now you have bloody urine. Oh, read your textbook, read mm -hmm. other books. I'll look it up online. Yes, Larry! Is that I, to me? I hope you're not that, asking questions about ancient Egypt. Huh? Is that to me? Is that to me that this is, um, so that means this is found in Africa then? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it only in Africa or is it everywhere? Schistosoma hematobium is found, uh, hematobium is found in Asia parts of Asia and Africa, Northern Africa, Africa, yes. Okay, uh, I don't, they're not in South America uh, or um, uh, Central and South America as far as I know. Uh, but anyhow, uh, but again, we say Shisu, but nah, these are, these two, Mansoni and Japanicum, Africa and Japanicum, uh, Far East, okay, that's what they got the name Japanicum, but they can be found uh, they can be found, these two guys, uh, both Mansoni and Japanicum, can be found in um, uh, Africa, uh, Asia, parts of Asia, as I said. Yes, Jose. Bloody feces, these two, J uh, Mansoni and Japanicum. Okay. Uh, there are no, there are no metacircular stage and radio stage. No metacircular and radio stage before schistosoma. Here's the life cycle. Uh, ulceration, what it means, what am I talking about? Your, your blood vessels uh, are ulcerated, you know, like ul stomach ulcer, you all know what I'm talking about. The epithelial cells are, are eroded away by ulcer. So what happens, the epithelial cells, which is called endothelial, is that right? You all know what I'm talking about, endothelial. The endothelial cells of the uh, blood vessels, all three of them, are kind of eroded away, they're damaged, that's why blood squirts out. Right? If you do not have those endothelial cells, if you do not have them, the next layer is blood. Right? In your blood vessels. I'm talking about your blood vessels. Right? So it's a smooth muscle, right? You have endothelial, smooth muscle, and uh, elastic fiber connective tissue. So ulceration of the blood vessels, believe it or not, is not caused by adult organisms, by the adult fasciola. It is caused by their egg. The egg of these organisms, usually, they have a, this is the egg, and they have a spike right here. And there are scientists that are saying these spikes are, are spine, they are causing the ulceration, and they are causing the actual, we know for sure, the egg is causing the damage. The egg of these organisms are causing the bleeding and damage. But uh, anyhow. Uh, so let's go over it. Uh, swimmers in the United States, so might as well I'll talk about this, and then I'll show you some pictures. The picture says about a million words in biology. I know. Is that right? In other sciences, it's 1,000 words. 
in biology. Well, swimmers is in the United States. Usually, we do not have any. All of this. Uh, none of these are in the United States. Okay, but what happens when people go to resorts? In the resorts, they have lakes, ponds, and uh, other uh, recreational, uh, maybe rivers, uh, facilities, and the people. They go to the lakes and ponds. What happens when they come out of pond and lake? Uh, they have these little nodules on their body, okay? And that's what the uh, cercaria, they do not have metacercaria. The cercaria are penetrating human, and we are the wrong host for them. And so they have, we have these little rashes, little nodules. Where did the cercaria came from? Birds. Birds poop in the water, and the eggs of the birds, uh, the feces of the birds, not the eggs, the feces of the birds have the eggs of the schistosoma, some kind of schistosoma, not these guys, some of the birds have their own genus species, genus name, genus species, same genus, different species name. So when they are pooping in the water, the uh, uh, Mercerium finding the snail in the water, and in the snail, out of the snail comes cercaria, and the cercaria goes inside of human, and we human, our immune system fights it off, kill them off, <coughs> and after 24 hours, we get rid of it. <coughs> but again, you do not like to have it, just use one person, hydrocortisone on your rashes, and then the itching stops. Uh, but your immune system usually gets rid of it. Yes? Does the cercaria, so a mesosnail? I thought it just goes straight to the skin. Yeah, uh, here is oh, another one. What method of biological? Okay, let's save that question because I think this this is going to answer a lot of questions. Okay. This picture, and then at the end, uh, somebody reminds me uh, to answer this question. Okay, here's a life cycle. People work in rice fields or near water. Well, guess where they are going to defecate? In the water. In the water, somewhere nearby. Okay, the eggs will come out from the feces, not the adult, right? The adults are inside of their uh, large intestine, small intestine, depends on what you're talking about, Japanic or Mansoni. Okay, so the feces of that person has the eggs. The eggs, Mercedium comes out, find the snail in the water. Am I making some sense? Out of the snail becomes cercaria. The next person comes to the rice field to work, and he's a healthy person. He just went from the United States to, uh, I don't know, somewhere in uh, Africa or other parts of the world. Goes to the water to help them in the rice field, and then the cercaria will penetrate the skin. You have not had any parasites. We have not talked about any parasites that can penetrate your skin. If penetrate the skin, they will travel. Remember, there are more than one. Two, three, four, five, ten of them travel, and some of them become male and female. That's what this is. Male, female. This is the only species we are studying for this exam, which is dioecious. The term monoecious, dioecious, you remember, R rings back. And then you have to be able, on the lab practical exam, I might put a pointer on this one, determine the gender. Determine the gender is a male. It has gynecophoric canal. Determine the gender, the female. Am I making some sense of little bit, you all? So male and female, in the blood vessels of that person, small intestine, large intestine, copulate, they release the egg in the feces. Or urinary bladder, through urea, uh, urine, sorry, urine, into the body of water, and the life cycle goes on and on and on. Did I answer your question? No. Yeah. Okay, now I have another question. Mm -hmm. That person who's defecating, they're not sick? They're not sick? Again, <laughs> again, yes, they are sick. Again, remember, these, are, these animals usually uh, are not causing clinical symptoms. They're usually causing subclinical symptoms. So you can still walk and work and do it. They are fine, but they are not feeling well. They are uh, lethargic, maybe, possibly, because they lost a lot of blood. Uh, so, but they are, they, yeah. People are working and they're having fun, I guess. You, you and I think they're not doing well. Somebody else has another question. Ariana, you have another question? Yeah. Uh, Ariana, you have another question? Uh, 
I was going to ask, how do they penetrate the skin? Like, is it kind of like bloody? Is it just, they go no. through the skin? There are, there are some studies have done, and people actually that penetrate the skin, they can feel a little bit of zing, a little bit of a, um, what do you do? Sensation, they can feel it. But these people are working in rice field. Something goes in, oh, probably a rice went into my leg or something. <laughs> that, you know, these twigs, little bit, and I'm, I'm fine. They just keep working. Okay, am I making some sense a little bit? Now, how at the tip of the sacaria, there is a sack of enzymes, and there are studies done, there are detailed studies. You can look it up online, or scientific papers published still, and they will dissolve our keratin, right? We have keratin right here. It's all keratin. We studied that in the first exam material. It's all keratin, right? So they dissolve the keratin and epithelial cells. Eventually, they can get in. They have the right enzyme to dissolve our skin. Yes? You're describing the circuit penetrating the skin. I thought birds poop in the water. No, no, that's different. Now this is schist this is schistosoma uh, no not dermatitis this is schistosoma uh, uh, Japanicum Mansoni hematobia right okay. what is schistosoma dermatitis since we do not have the right snail and the right species not in the United States so birds mm -hmm. they're flying on the top of a pond or river right they poop into the water. Am I making some sense? The bird have male and female inside of their uh, in, uh, blood vessels of the intestine. And then uh, they poop the water, the egg comes a mercenium. In that pond or lake you swim when you go on a resort, right, or somewhere, they, uh, the snail is there, so they penetrate the snail. Out of the snail comes a cercaria. This cercaria is waiting for a bird who comes to the water that penetrate that bird. But instead of a bird, a human comes. We are the wrong host. Of course, our immune system will kill it, get rid of it. But these guys, those three musketeers I told you, Mansoni, Hematobium, and uh, Japanicum, right? Those three, they have the machinery to go farther, to go to the, our blood vessels. To go to the blood vessels and become a doctor. They're larval stage, right? They're larval stage. One egg becomes, one egg becomes many cercaria, right? Am I right? Am I making some sense? Yes, 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 um, yes, yes, yes. So this only has to do with Shistoma japanica and mansia? Shistosoma japanicum, Shistosoma mansoni, Shistosoma hematobium, those are human Shistosoma. And they are found in uh, Far East, Africa and Asia, parts of Asia, not all of Asia. Yes. Uh, just because the schistosome dermatitis isn't a species, right? That's it's right. Not it's control. not a species. You know, then I should look up some of the species that uh, birds are carrying it and then get inside of human. Get inside of human. That's what they call it swimmer's itch, schistosoma. This is not a scientific. That's why I did not underline it. Look, I did not underline it. Because it's just, they're calling it schistosoma dermatitis. Okay? Because if you want the actual scientific name, we have to go look up what are the uh, species of schistosoma in birds, and then we can list them, say, okay, this organism, this schistosoma can cause schistosoma dermatitis. This organism can cause schistosoma dermatitis. Do I make sense? Schistosoma dermatitis in human does not become adult. Because we do not have the right enzymes for it. We do not have the right machinery for those. The birds do, not us. Okay. Any other questions? Shisoma. Shisoma, again, is another devastating organism on planet Earth. A lot of people are dying off of it. Okay. Uh, of course, in high numbers. We are talking about people. Uh, here we go. One of the uh, devastation of this parasite is uh, this is a 13 years old boy. Okay, and this is a 24-year-old man. Okay, one of the things that this organism, schistosoma, cause is dwarfism. So it can cause uh, people high numbers. Of course, uh, the, he is having a big belly. Again, it could be schistosoma. It could be other diseases. I don't know. 
But one thing they're contributing uh, this is schistosoma. I call, it's causing dwarfism in, in human. Again, the numbers have to be high. They have, the person has to have too many of them. Just a few usually uh, do not cause that much of a problem. Yes? Uh, is it from the schistosoma <coughs> that are infecting them as children and it just stunts their growth? Or is it when it's uh, right. usually as a yeah. fetus? Or, or? No, usually when, when they are at this age, they're infected. They go to the uh, help mom and dad in the field and then they're having it, but they never actually grow to be a normal size. Okay, that's one of the uh, drawbacks of schistosoma. Besides killing people, uh, it does um, dwarfism, isn't it? Okay, here we go. I did list them for you guys. I guess I did list them for you. Great. I thought I'd put it in later on, PowerPoints. But a World Health Organization proclaimed uh, one six major diseases are schistosomiasis. You study that. Malaria, of course, kills a lot of people. Uh, Filariasis, uh, we haven't studied that yet. We will. We'll talk about that. Okay. Uh, Trypanosomiasis, you know that. And then uh, Leishmaniasis, you know that. We, we talked about all of them except filariasis, which I will mention that later on. And of course, leprosy. They're saying leprosy is killing a lot of people. Uh, but out of six, remember, five or more parasites. Five of them that they are not mentioned in US medical schools. Because we don't have much of a problem with them in the United States. But the rest of the world have a problem with them. But anyway, <clears throat> Paragonimus westermini, it is found in the United States. OK. Uh, Let's stop right here because I don't want to go to second YouTube. Uh.